Hi guys, it's Legend Arma TV. It's good to see you. Today, we're going to be visiting Laditan Bridge, the new Season 4 raid battle. And we're going to face off against an interesting duo of Lazar and Ipona. The requirements, the gameplay, and the tips are up ahead. Please enjoy. And as always, we're going to start with the requirements. The requirements for Laditan Bridge is as follows. The attack cap is 42,300. It's a lot. You probably will need militia weapon uh, to be able to uh, cap this battle. Uh, if we look into the uh, stats, the uh, boss level 105, obviously, the critical resistance that you will need is 211 to critical resist cap opponent. You will need 222 critical to crit cap her. And the amount of uh, counter force that you will need to do 100% damage to the boss is 175. If we look into the quick battle, however, it's a little bit different. See, with the recent update, which was almost a week ago, uh, they removed such um, stats as power and technique. Before, if you watched any of my boss guides, uh, you would see in the requirements there will be a, a power requirement and technique requirement, the minimum amounts, uh, to join the battle. Now they have basically uh, disassembled them. You need all of them separately. You need attack or magic attack, you need critical, you need balance, and you need certain amount of defense. So for Epona to be able to join the quick battle, you need at least 38,300 attack, 20,300 defense, 193 critical, and 78 balance. Also, the amount of counterforce, uh, the minimum amount of counterforce that you can join Laditon Bridge is 150. Please be advised, I know this, uh, this patch has been quite a nuisance for a lot of people, and a lot of people lost their opportunity to join uh, endgame raids because of these uh, new requirements. However, if you do have you do have them, uh, there they are, and um, that's about it for them. It's time to get for the gameplay. All right, we are inside. There is a very short pre-dungeon in Laditon Bridge, and you're gonna end up fighting five trash monsters, just archers, and Lazar himself. Now, Lazar early in the battle right here he is quite weak he doesn't possess that much of a threat and he's gonna die very very quickly because he doesn't really have a lot of hps so deal with lazar uh, swiftly and uh, you will be transitioned uh, to the next phase to the real battle see uh you summon epona she is quite mad you kill her husband spoilers even though he's already a corpse spoilers and the fight against the boss begins now, uh, when it comes to this particular battle, uh, the first thing that you need to keep in mind is that some of the attacks of Epona and Lazar are imbued with fire. So, whenever you're gonna get hit by some of them, you're gonna get debuffed with such thing called blistering. Now, blistering doesn't really uh, last too long. It's only 5 seconds short, but it depletes HP and SP. It's not a lot, but it's still kind of annoying, so try to avoid dodging and blocking uh, most of the uh, uh, boss's attacks to make sure that you don't get blistered. Now, the first phase of Epona, she doesn't do anything, honestly. She has a couple of patterns right here. She obviously has a couple of anti-range uh, attacks that you're going to see a little bit... Uh, further in the video. The problem that I've encountered myself, and a lot of people might agree with me, is that these bosses have very long wind-ups and delays between the attacks in the strings, which makes uh, counter-based characters to be very confused at start. Now, if we look here, uh, real quick, this is one of the anti-range, so she does a shockwave and then sends two homing balls uh, your way. And she also spawns like a like a flame strike on the ground, so uh, make sure you don't uh, stay too far away from her, so you don't, uh, so you avoid unnecessary damage from all of that. See, uh, one of the other things uh, that the current uh, patch has brought us is the fact that whenever you deplete the uh, toughness bar the tenacity bar, the blue one, they don't stun anymore. They don't drop on their knees and 
you know, and give you the opportunity for free DPS. So uh, be advised whenever you're going to deplete the uh, the bar, be very careful. They are still going to continue attacking. Now, when Epona drops to around eight bars at the end of the eighth bar start at seven she actually shields herself and um, temporarily leaves the battle at this point she revives lazar and the first thing that is the most <laughs> frightening about this encounter right here the camera is focused on him right here what you need to know is that this particular attack is a KO attack. This is a skewer KO uh, move that Lazar does. So he slowly walks towards you and then stabs you. If he stabs you and you don't dodge or block, he will skewer you and you're just gonna go down on the ground dead instantly. Also on top of that, he also sends a shockwave. So please be advised, he's gonna use that uh, move uh, quite frequently and uh, in order to uh, figure out if it's coming you just have to look at what he's doing so if he's walking really slowly towards anyone it means that he's probably going to do the uh, skewer ko move now one of the other things that is quite annoying about lazar and i get caught by that very very often is this particular pattern so there's a long wind up and then he starts slamming the ground with the sword uh, sending shockwaves one after another. He sends four shockwaves, and at the end of the string, he actually uh, surrounds himself with a red attack right over here, the red vortex. Now, this is unblockable, you can deal with that. So, whenever the fourth shockwave leaves uh, on the ground, make sure you take some distance from Lazar so you avoid unnecessary damage from that. It hurts, it hurts a lot, trust me. I got caught by that a lot. Now, Epona doesn't become completely useless. Uh, she's still in the battle, and she actually keeps on spawning AoE uh, circles around, uh, like time bombs. So make sure you dodge these as well. You can block and dodge them. It's pretty easy. Uh, so they're basically attacking together, which is awesome. I've been wanting a council boss like that for a long time. However, it's still not quite that. One of the other patterns that Lazar has is a long wind up and then he charges towards you and then does quick two stabs in a row. This might be pretty hurtful, so be advised whenever that pattern goes uh, that you are ready to uh, dodge away or block these uh, two stabs because the damage here is quite, quite insane. And right here, again, right after this pattern, he does it again. He slowly starts walking towards the target and then stabs it. This is the skewer KO, so please be advised. <clears throat> it's quite nasty. Well, quite nasty. It's a KO, right? So it just kills you. So uh, make sure you don't get caught by that. And then does a shockwave at the end. Pretty much this is uh, about it for this uh, particular phase. You just keep on fighting Lazar. Uh, he doesn't... You can hold him. You see, the toughness bar uh, keeps on glowing blue, which means uh, he's um, you can't really uh, use any hold moves on him. So uh, just continue attacking him. Uh, keep it in mind that the uh, pattern with the two stabs is quite devastating. Watch out for the shockwaves and the red attack at the end. And also watch out for this slow walk into the skewer KO so you don't die. Keep on fighting him. The problem, as I said, is the long wind-ups and the delays between the strings, and also Lazar's hitbox is quite nasty. I actually find fighting Lazar um, in the boss bo in the boss fight uh, more annoying than fighting Epona herself. So continue depleting uh, his health. He's also uh, gonna debuff you with blistering if he uh, connects some of the hits. Continue depleting it, and when um, Lazar drops to like four bars, he is gonna die. He's gonna die. This is gonna prompt uh, the descendants of Epona back, and we are transitioning to the last phase. Now, whenever she loses that shield and she drops down, for the next like 10 seconds, she's gonna be invincible. So uh, keep that in mind. She's gonna do this long wind up, but you can't do uh, any damage to her. And she's going to summon this huge sword. The sword drops and sends a shockwave, so watch out, dodge and block it. And you can start fighting Epona in the last phase. Now, what's so interesting about the last phase? 
Uh, Ipona is uh, brainwashed by Maka, so you're going to see a lot of uh, similarities with the Maka fight, because you're going to see this huge ring that is it, that keeps on shrinking, uh, allow, uh, not allowing you to have a lot of space. So this is going to get tougher and tougher. Uh, if you leave the ring, the the inner circle, and you go outside, you're actually going to start um, getting receiving a huge amounts of damage from that. So make sure you stay away from that. You're going to die rather quickly, as you can see in the preview. I'm taking like what, like 1800 damage for like two seconds or something like that. Plus there is a blister debuff on me, on top. Now what's uh, Interesting about this last phase, Pona gets sword attacks at the same time with her uh, patterns. So whenever she attacks, she summons uh, swords everywhere. And we, let's look at this particular pattern right here, because it's quite, quite long. So she she keeps on attacking, and then she does this huge bunk, and you would think she, she's done, right? But it's not. She fakes it out, and then she sends an enormous amount of swords around, which damages, and as you can see, I'm taking a huge damage right here, so uh, be advised. Watch out for the wind-ups, watch out uh, for every attack that she does, she's gonna uh, duplicate uh, an attack with a sword, so it, it's gonna just... Uh, add extra damage on you. Right here you can see she's uh, doing this particular string and then sends swords everywhere. You can block them, you can dodge them still, so make sure you utilize and make sure that your block is on point. Now at some point the inner circle is just gonna stop shrinking and uh, you're gonna have your arena back, all the space back, and just finish Epona. It's literally this boss fight doesn't really have a lot of mechanics, and this boss fight is actually way faster than any other Season 4 battles, surprisingly. And just kill her, and that's it. Enjoy your rewards. And finally, for the rewards. Now, Epona, just like any Season 4 uh, boss, drops militia stuff. She drops militia essence, Damascus steel, militia weapon essence, militia armor essences, and succession shards. Also, Epona has two unique drops to herself, which is Epona Essence and a Sorrowful Enchant Scroll. First of all, Epona Essence is used for the new ring, which is a sister ring to CS ring, so you can finally complete the ring set of 105 rings. And the Sorrowful Enchant Scroll is applied uh, for gloves and boots of Militian. Strictly for Militian, this is a rank 5 Enchant Scroll. It's an upgraded weeping, so if you're running Militian stuff, uh, you might want to have Sorrowful on your stuff. And that's about it for the rewards. Let's get to the conclusion. And that's it for today, covering Ipona in a battle called Aladaton Bridge. As you can see, this battle is not too hard. And I really wish you guys are going to get some really awesome drops from her. Thank you so much for watching. This was Legend Arma TV. Please subscribe to YouTube channel. Join my Discord. Stop by Twitch. I love you all three freaking thousand. Please be safe. And I see you very, very soon.